Yo, what the fuck is up, everybody? Welcome back to episode three of the Champagne Poppies Thanks. podcast. As always, I'm your host, Marco Guzman. And I'm Joe Longo. And when the poppies go down, we go down together. When we go up, we go up together. We're yes, now sir. both one and one. In fantasy. And I'm never going to say this again, but shout out to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, go, Pack, go, us, go, Pack, go. Both of us were losing going into Monday night. You by nine. Yeah. And you had Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers, which was cash money. Yeah, I, I wasn't too. I wasn't worried too much about it. Like I knew I was gonna get the dub out. Um, I mean, I had Devonta and Aaron Rodgers, so yeah, both of them definitely helped. I mean, it was a little scary just because of their performance in Week One, but we all knew. Yeah, but that's like, you had almost a thirty point deficit. It was like twenty six. I know. I, I was down by twenty two point eight yeah, going into Monday 8. night, and I had a single player left, and his name was Aaron Jones. AJ, the sombrero. <laughs> When he busted out the sombrero, that's when I knew it was over for Pion. Uh, three receiving yeah. touchdowns. Ava got yeah, a that's lot crazy. Of it. Uh, when she was here, she was here to celebrate that with me, even though she had no fucking clue what yeah. the fuck was happening. It was crazy that like they weren't even rushing touchdowns; they were fucking yeah, receiving it helps. touchdowns. Uh, shout out to all the females who have to put up with fantasy football and football season in general. That um, is very true. That is very we definitely true. Definitely lock the fuck into this shit. Like Sundays from twelve until fucking eleven. It is. I'm very unavailable. Like, very unavailable. Um. Um, I, it's it's a crazy it's like a weekly feeling. thing. It's a crazy feeling that after his crazy performance, I went from last week I was the lowest scoring player, and this week I was the highest scoring or second highest scoring player. Yeah, I was say. James Hanna had a crazy week. Shout out Ooh, to him. James Hanna had fucking one seventy. Well, let me get the exact number. One seventy one point six two points. Yeah, we, we shouted out Oaken last week for his one sixty ball. We have to shout out. Um, yeah, this is crazy. He had Derrick Henry with 47.7. He had Tyler Lockett with 31.8. Deontay Johnson, 19.5. Brandon Cooks, 22.8. Um, and then Clyde edwards helaire had 2.6. So he didn't even do good. So he could even have a better... Yeah, he could have had an even better crazy. week. And you forgot to mention that the Patriots' defense got 16 oh, for him. Got 16, but, yeah. Um, yeah, our league is definitely starting to shape up. And speaking of shape up, there's a lot of shake up. We've With just these teams. seen Holy shit. a lot of trades go down in our league. It's, it's a little weird for uh, talking heads to talk about their own fantasy league, but I feel like I would care about other people's fantasy league. I would care about other people's fantasy league. Like, I would be interested to see how other people's seasons shape up. Because right, every, every because league is different. And so everything, like, it's just crazy how different general managers and different people manage the same players. Right. So a week ago, we were talking about how crazy my trade was. And now my trade looks like a piece of shit. Compared to everything that just happened. So first we're going to talk about the smaller of the two. Okay, but, but, which but. me and you have a little bit of debate on, which is why I'm starting with it. Um, no, I think well, I don't think there's much debate about it. So the trade is, um, some one of our friends, James, trades away McCole Harvin and Devin Singletary. Right. Two, two bench players in fantasy, to be honest. To Carlos for DJ Chark Jr. and Leonard Fournette. Right. So, um, I think DJ Chark is a big improvement over McColl. I think McColl's in a better agreed. offense, but he's playing behind a he lot playing, of targets. Yeah, he's playing a lot behind. DJ a lot Chark behind. is essentially co-wide receiver one in Jacksonville, yeah. and eventually Trevor Lawrence is going to figure it out and be a dog. Yeah. So it's like that, and they're going to be losing a lot of games. So they're going to so the, the, the place where I was like, we were kind of, I was saying like, eh, it's an all right trade. I still right. think James wins the trade, but because Leonard Fournette hasn't been performing the way he should. That a lot of people were expecting him to perform up okay. to this point in the season. Fair. And Devin Singletary, I mean, like, even last week, he had, uh, last week he had 28 point. Oh, no, that's not last week. Uh, where is the uh, points he had last week? Last week he had 17.1. Okay. And the week before that he had an 11, which is, which is respectable running back, like, two respectable options. Running so, that's why I said between those two, I don't think it's, like, I feel like those two are very much relatively even. It's relatively even, but the thing about fantasy football, it's a very much a mindset game. And yes, James had Devin Singletary for two weeks. He would tell me he didn't want Clyde that much anymore. He doesn't trust Clyde like that. He's okay with it, but he doesn't trust it. He didn't even think of starting Devin Singletary. I think he's thinking of starting Fournette over Clyde. Because like I was telling you earlier, Fournette's in that offense with Brady. Brady's going to yeah. check that bitch down, and we love catches. Well, speaking of that, too, I mean, Clyde Edwards, I think he's going to pick it up eventually. So him having him on the I bench so, but... until he gets back into the offense, because it is the focal point of that offense. I don't know what's been going on with him, um, but he should be straight. Speaking of focal points of offenses, we saw a huge trade. So that was the smaller of the trade. <sighs> this is the huge one, and I just want to... a blockbuster. I just need everyone to... Like, da -na -na, da -na -na, breaking to news. think about the return that one of these guys got. Because in all honesty, one of these guys, his name is Adrian, he is a trade demon. All he does is try to get finesses. Yeah, he's trying and to trade all these, away He's like always every trying day. to trade. And he even put in the chat, Diggs is on the block. This trade happened at 1 in the morning. Yeah. So 12.58. 12.58, exactly. 
So my boy Adrian gives up Stefan Diggs, his personal first round pick, the wide receiver I wanted personally to mm-hmm. go along with uh, Josh Allen. Stefan Diggs, he gave up Joe Burrow, who was his QB two, just because the other guy needed a, he had Mac Jones at quarterback, so mm-hmm. that helps him. Zach Pascal and Michael Pittman from the from the Colts, so the entire offense. And Kyle Pitts, the wide or the tight end that he finessed not too long ago. Mm-hmm. So he's given up essentially a wide receiver one and a yes. top end tight end. So in yeah, terms so of he's potential. given up Joe Burrow, Stephon Diggs, Zach Pascal, Kyle Pitts, and Michael Pittman Jr. All right? of them. All of them. All of you have three wide receivers, a tight end, a top five, top ten tight end, top yeah. ten tight end. At Let's least not top, say top five. five. Yeah. And Joe Burrow, I mean, is a mediocre, or whatever. Cool. Four: Dallas Goder, Ezekiel Elliott, and Robbie Anderson. Notice how the second one. There wasn't much emphasis on that one. Yeah. Zeke, he was the fifth overall pick. He's a great running back. I love Zeke. I hope he proves yeah. uh, Zeke. all of us wrong. But I, I'm a believer in Zeke the player. But in terms of the fantasy players, yeah, right now his fantasy value isn't very high. He is an RB2 in my opinion in terms of fantasy. Okay. And Stefan Diggs is potentially wide receiver one. Not yeah. a wide receiver one. Wide receiver one. Yeah. Agreed. So. Agreed. Because I mean, he is Josh Allen's his favorite target. Right. And at first I saw the tight end for tight end uh, yeah. part of it, and I was like, oh, maybe Adrian improved there, and that's part of the deal. Yeah. No, he dropped from Kyle Pitts to Dallas Goddard. Mm-hmm. What's I don't know what the thinking is behind this trade. Yeah, especially, like, I mean, Dallas Goddard is okay. Like, he's one of those running backs that are tight ends that's going to give you either, like, four points or he can give you, like, a respectable 12 to 13, 14, mm-hmm. right? But Kyle Pitts has been so he far, be like... Crazy. With Matt Ryan, obviously, I don't expect Matt Ryan to be an MVP again anytime soon, but that's still a solid quarterback throwing him the ball. And they suck, so they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. Exactly. And so if he's one of the top options, he's going to get a lot of fucking points. He had 12 last week, 12.1, I think, last week. So here's the part that gets me mad is that Adrian Perennially is one of the better fantasy guys in the leagues that I've been in. Mm -hmm. Um, He won last year. Um, He always has a weird name. Last year he was Cam Akers season before he dropped Cam Akers. I picked him up when he went crazy. Yeah, Cam Akers. Then he traded to Devontae Adams season. Um, shout out your guy. So he ended up winning the league. He didn't have any good running backs. He had Josh uh, Jacobs, who obviously was out, but that's okay. That's an RB2. And Damian Harris, who I like more than the average, but again, in fantasy, he's not that big. Yeah. His entire way he was going to win was the middle four of his team. The Tyreek Hill, Stefan Diggs, Terry McLaurin, and Kyle Scary Pitts Terry. combination. That, that combination can carry you yes, to a fantasy yes, championship. Yes. They literally can. You don't need... Running backs when you have that combination, so to blow it all up for Zeke. Yeah, like I, honestly, I feel like the only significant pickup there is Zeke. Like you're losing, you're losing two wide receivers and a potential right. even flex play with Michael Pittman. You're getting a worse tight end. Right. And Robbie Anderson is like, or a, a flex play slash running back or wide receiver. Your two. flex just dropped from Terry McLaurin to Robbie Anderson. Your wide receiver two just dropped from Stephon Diggs to Terry McLaurin. Yeah. Your tight end just dropped from Kyle Pitts. To Dallas Goddard. Yeah. And then and all I for, guess your RB1 just improved a little yeah, bit. You have Zeke, and then you have, well, he also has Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. Which he's like, out right now. Right, so he still has Damian Harris. Harris. So, uh, I think that's that, a, that, that brings him down from being scary as fuck to just being like, okay, you're still a, a good team. Like, he's still got a good team. I'm not going to say he doesn't have a good team anymore. But I'm though. But am I like, oh, is he one of those four or five guys that I'm scared of when it comes to fantasy time or playoff time? Yeah. No, I think that I'm there, not. There's a, a few. Honestly, that. right now, our, our league, now that it's the second week, it's kind of at least looked more like, I don't know exactly what to say. It's more evened out a little bit more. It has evened out, like, but there are a, some teams starting to load up. Yes, like there I are teams. Elkin. Pff, Elkin's team is crazy. Uh, James. James. Um, those are, are the two big powerhouses yeah, right those, now yeah, in I think my In terms team. of names, those are the top two. And then after that, I mean, obviously, I think. Me and you both like uh, that yeah, last yeah, yeah. week. One was a fluke. Um, yeah, it really was because the lowest scoring that pissed me off. That made yeah, that's why exactly. I wanted to trade somebody. I'm like the lowest scoring. That's tough. But I think I have the elite RBs. I think I have the guy who's gonna be. A and top I'm playing Adrian this week, so that's gonna make my job a little easier. That is gonna make your job a little easier, but it's also gonna see the way his team is built. Maybe he yeah. he knows something we don't. That ah, uh, so I still don't I still don't on. see it though. Like like I think the way his team is set up right now, I'm like, oh, you know what? That's gonna be a good matchup. But now after that, I'm like. And then I also have some trades developing in the background, so I hopefully I will come back with an even better team. Um, yeah, well, you're trying to go for a couple of running backs. I'm trying to go for uh, Chris Godwin right now, yeah. so we're all trying to make movements in the background. We're but all trying to make movements in the background. Going into week three, I feel good. I'm playing a pretty weak team, so I'm not going to talk too much about me. But like you said, you're playing Adrian. we got about two minutes left here. Yep. Um, 
what are your thoughts going into it other than this trade helping you out a lot? Like what 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 scares you? Are is there a matchup? Kyler Murray, first of all, Kyler Murray has been on a tear. Oh. So like last week he had almost fifty points. So that this, this is the guy that I roasted for trying to trade me Kyler Murray for Josh Allen straight up. Yeah. And looking back, I'm like but it's we too, it's early in the season. I mean, Josh weeks, Allen gets two like, weeks, and yes. Josh Allen exactly starts exactly. the season against three very good. A teams. lot of people like to hit the panic button after week one. Fucking relax. It was all you'll see better days. Everything happens for a reason. There's a seventeen. It's an eighteen week season now. That's seventeen right. games. That's so right. still a lot of season left to go. Um, not very. Like I said, honestly, I mean, the biggest thing I'd be worried about is just Kyler Murray and maybe Tyreek Hill. But even Tyreek Hill hasn't been like dropping like crazy games up to this point. Uh, like last week he had five point nine, week one yeah. he had thirty seven, right? So that's, that's what I'm saying. It, it could be it could be something to look for. But besides those two players, there's nobody else on the team that worries me. All right, so you could be potentially looking at two two and one teams in a week. Yes, sir. But you yes, will not sir. hear us talk about fantasy too much more until we would know that, which is next week. So yep, fantasy looking forward to week two. Week three. week three, week three of the fantasy or the NFL season coming up. Dun, dun, dun. And speaking of the NFL season, we're coming up with that right after this break or when you click on the next video because now we break these up on YouTube. Yep, so see you in a bit. See you in a bit. Click on the next video.